Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Please rise for the procession and remain standing for the singing of the national anthem.
would just like everybody to know um, that that song was written for Athabasca University and it celebrates the graduating students and honors their um, walk into the big wide sky. So I present Elder Campbell to say the prayer. I acknowledge this land, the ancient ancestors, and the spirit of this place, Athabasca. A great mystery, I thank you for this day and for this good life you have lent us. I thank you for our families, our children, and our old ones. I thank you for our graduates, their teachers, and for this university. I thank you also for the waters that give us life. I thank you for all our relatives, the creatures of this land, the four-legged, those that fly, those that live in the water, and those who crawl. I thank you for all the insects and for all the tiny ones. I thank you for the trees and all the plants, the medicines and the food. And I ask for blessings for the students, blessings for their journey to be rich, gentle and challenging and that the road be not too bumpy. Kirinaskum gawinaumaski 
Igo kse wat suene petain, igo kueske peka noemia. Kine nas kum n, ko kum na unoto ko atayokan. Ka peka noemia, ka pewitsi hia, kiu ma wia swel na ka kiau ka tago naman. Ego ami na kimo som na wak, ka newa petsek, ka ka noeta ka ka niskwa tema. Ego nek mina nas kum a wak. Kine nas kum n, ka te petsek iin. Kwechim nka witi hiya ka kanoe mea. Kamiu sihta ako matoskewen. Kamiu sihta ako meska nao ka gimiya. Kweska kanoe tama kitaski nao. Npiyo ma ka gimiya ka kiyo gigoy. Witi hinan. Kamiu wa kohto ya. Ea guan makchoa simsino ako nakata maano ako. I ask the Creator to guide us and keep us safe, to help us be good relatives, good stewards, good protectors of this beautiful land. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Elder Campbell. Um, you may all be seated now. Welcome to Athabasca University's 2017 Convocation. Before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional territories where we are gathered today in recognition that we are guests to the original peoples of these lands, especially the Cree and Métis people, both of who were here at the making of Treaty 8. Sorry? Um, oh, that's what, that's what was missing. Thank you. <laughs> okay, very good. Th thank you so much, Neil. Um, um, Elder, Mr. President, distinguished guests, members of the platform party, Graduates, ladies and gentlemen, today I have the great pleasure of welcoming you to Athabasca University's 2017 Convocation Ceremony. I am honored to be addressing you today as the new chair of the Governors of Athabasca University. My sincere thanks to Minister Schmidt for supporting my application for this important role through the Provincial Cabinet. And while I am new in this role, I've been part of the Athabasca University family for over 20 years. It's a pleasure to be on this stage to celebrate with you. I'd also like to thank my husband, Bill Dushensky, and sons, uh, Lawrence and Peter Dushensky, uh, as well as my colleagues and friends for their support in the work that I'm doing here at Athabasca University. And of course, I'd also like to thank Marg Morazic, who was our interim board chair for many years, for her friendship and leadership over these last years. Thanks to family, friends, and community, and beyond, who sent lots of great wishes when I was appointed to this role. It's been a whirlwind just the last couple of months. And it's my particular pleasure to welcome today's inductee to the Order of Athabasca University, Ms. Diane Davies, in recognition of her outstanding dedication to Athabasca University during her term as a public member of the Board of Governors. Celebrating with Diane today is her husband, Doug Vokens. I'll be introducing Ms. Davies to you more fully later in the program. Today, we're also fortunate to welcome Doris Splain, the Reeve of Athabasca County. 
and to you, our graduates, the class of 2017, let me say a very, very special welcome. This is your day, your time, and I'm truly happy for your accomplishments. On behalf of the whole Athabasca University community, I'm pleased to welcome you, all of you, and your family, and your friends who are here with here in Athabasca to celebrate this very special day. In a few minutes, you'll walk across the stage to receive your degrees, and I'd like to congratulate each and every one of you on your very significant accomplishments. <clears throat> As you graduate in 2017, you're entering a Canada and a world that demands fresh ideas, creative thinking, imagination, and leadership. These, these attributes will demand and invite you to long, lifelong learning and critical reflection. And I hope that your sojourn here at Athabasca University has prepared you well for the next stages of your journey, where you'll apply and hone those skills and learn from and teach each other in making your own contribution towards the world that you want to create. As Canada's open university, Athabasca University is here to stay. We are dedicated to creating opportunities and increasing the quality of education for adult learners worldwide. You are all living proof of the success of that mission. According to some sources, the name Athabasca comes from the Cree word Athabaskawa, which means where there are plants one after another likely a reference to the reeds and vegetation along the river. As you may know, the Athabasca River originates in Jasper National Park at the toe of the rapidly receding Athabasca Glacier. Flowing along melting ice fields and through gorges, it offers wildlife as well as human habitat on its shores and marshes. Alberta's longest undammed river travels almost 800 miles before draining into the Peath Athabasca Delta at Lake Athabasca. From there, its waters flow north, joining the Peace River to form the Slave River that empties into Great Slave Lake and discharges through the Mackenzie River system into the Arctic Ocean. This river is a metaphor for our university, a university that is open and connected to the world, a university that is undammed, providing open access to a rich diversity of opportunities at undergraduate and graduate levels to learners everywhere. The Athabasca River is an historic waterway for First Nations people. The Sakani, Shuswap, Kootenai, Salish, Stony, and Cree tribes hunted and fished along the river. And from about 1778, the Athabasca River was a key part of the main fur trade route from the Mackenzie River to the Great Lakes. Through our connection to the Athabasca River, we are connected to the rivers and oceans, landscapes, small towns, cities, rural and remote and First Nations communities, as well as the large urban centers around the world. Distance education becomes even more important at a time when we are reaffirming the importance of our relationships and our connections with one another and with our land and with our water. And at this time, when climate change is radically changing our landscape, as well as our conversation, our researchers here at Athabasca University are leading the conversation about the impact of climate change on the Athabasca River, and by extension, on our communities and our university. And of course, we're probably the university with the lowest carbon footprint of any in the country. I take my new position at a time of great change and great promise for Athabasca University. By now, you will all have heard of the third-party report by Dr. Ken Coates, which was released yesterday. I'm looking forward to working with our president, our administration, staff, and the government of Alberta on developing the strategic plan and actions that will allow us to implement its recommendations to create a bright and dynamic future for our institution. I'm especially delighted to be working closely with our new president, Dr. Neil Fasina, who's also at this conv convocation stage for the very first time this year. Neil is a visionary leader who's decisive and who has experience leading transformative change. Together, we will implement a new vision for Athabasca University. Dr. Coates' report, based on deep research and extensive consultation, is both thorough and forward-looking. 
It marks the start of a new phase of our university, one that's positive, progressive, and places AU once again at the forefront of open and distance education, a position that is recognized around the world. In fact, often we are better known as a university around the world than we are right here in our own community. For almost five decades, in fact, we have led and innovated in distance education. And yesterday when we conferred the honorary doctorate to Dr. Michael Moore, we were reminded at the extraordinary reputation that this university has worldwide in the world of distance education. Working in partnership with First Nations and Northern Alberta Colleges, we have provided and will continue to provide remarkable educational and professional opportunities to thousands of graduates just like you. We are at a moment as we reach towards our 50th birthday in 2020, where we can recraft our story so that the future is even brighter. Thomas King, the prominent novelist said, if we change the stories we live by, quite possibly we change our lives. And then he said, the truth about stories is that's all we are. You are now part of our story and we are part of yours. It's a story that will put you, our graduates, as well as the next generation of students front and center. Everything we do, every decision we make, every step along the path will have your perspective and your stories as our shared compass towards guiding us towards the future. So together with my colleagues on the Board of Governors, our faculty, staff, and the entire community, once again, congratulations. I'd like to invite Doris Splain, the Reeve of Athabasca County, to the podium to bring greetings on behalf of the county. Good afternoon. It's a real privilege to be here. <clears throat> Each year we see a new group of graduates, graduates, pardon me, <clears throat> cross the stage and it tells us our future is in good hands. Madam Chair, Mr. President, distinguished guests, members of the platform party, graduates, family and friends. As you all know, today is a very special day of celebration. Many long hours and tireless effort has brought us to this day, and finally, success. You've completed this leg of your life's journey, and now you're ready for the next part of the journey. I say success because my dictionary says success is to reach a favorable result or a wished for outcome. I believe that each one of you started this journey with today in mind. You had a goal and you've worked hard to achieve that goal. Today, you've reached that wished for outcome. Today, you have success. Congratulations on all your achievements and even more on your steadfast diligence that you have exemplified to get here. Embrace the opportunities that will come your way and you will experience many more successes as you travel life's highway. So on behalf of the Council of Athabasca County, as well as the Mayor and Council of the Town of Athabasca, I want to wish you the very best for your future and congratulations. And please do enjoy your time here in Athabasca. We've been blessed, a very beautiful natural area and we love to share it with others. And I know today there's rain at times, but in between times, do have a look around and uh, just have a wonderful day. Life is a journey, enjoy it. Thank you so much, Doris. I'd now like to invite Dr. Neil Fasina to the podium. Thank you, Madam Chair. Elder Campbell, Madam Chair, distinguished guests, members of our platform party, our graduates, family and friends. Welcome to Athabasca University for this very special convocation ceremony. To our graduates and to their loved ones uh, who have traveled to be with us today, I will admit to being as excited as you are for this uh, day of celebration 
as it will mark my first convocation as the president of this amazing institution. For many of you, not only will this be the first time to Athabasca, it will be the first time that you have met your fellow learners or the many exceptional faculty or staff here in a face-to-face -face, uh, environment. But know that today, we all stand united in our pride for your accomplishments and successes being celebrated throughout the day. Few would argue that knowledge enabled through education fuels individuals and their communities to rise to the highest potential. The same knowledge forms the basis of innovation that strengthens the social, the environmental, and the economic opportunities and diversity within those communities. Each of you is a testament to the power of knowledge without boundaries. For some of you, the pressures of everyday home or job life may have limited your time or your ability to study. For others, your connection to your community and culture would have been too large of a sacrifice to make in order to attend a more traditional bricks and mortar environment. For other graduates, perhaps it was a limited academic record that was preventing you from attending a university in another place. Regardless, though, of your personal circumstances or background, Athabasca University looked for and embraced only one thing, and that is your passion to learn. Athabasca University has a rich history spanning 50 years in which we have systematically dismantled the barriers that learners face in pursuit of their personal learning goals. At each turn, we endeavor to create inclusion and access in ways that no one else can. For instance, did you know that 78% of our learners indicate that if it wasn't for AU, they would not have been able to attend a university or they would have experienced incredible difficulties in doing so? Or that 70% of our learners are the first in their family to achieve a university credential? It's numbers like these that reinforce the important place that each of our graduates will have in the knowledge landscape of Alberta, Canada, and well beyond. And today, you join a group of 30,000 distinguished alumni all over the world, each of which has a story of the impact that AU had in their personal journey. And we hope that you will join them in telling your story proudly. And in turn, know that as you leave today, that you are just as much a part of our story. Know that as you take the next step in your personal journey, we will join you in the next step in our journey towards a bright and prosperous future. While many are looking to you as leaders in your communities, many around the world expect the same of us. They are looking to AU to be a leader and innovator in open, accessible, and flexible distance learning. Following in your demonstrated strength and persistence, AU will embrace this leadership role for the betterment of our graduates of days gone by, for our graduates of today, and for our graduates of days yet to come. And so like you, we are fueled by our passion for learning. Like you, we are strong, committed, and resilient. And like you, we remain focused on our future. And like you, we will continue to rise to our highest potential. As Canada's Open University, we will tell your stories proudly as part of our story as a global model of accessible and inclusive education. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for making AU part of your journey. And I, along with the entire university, wish each and every one of you all the best in wherever your journey takes you. Congratulations once again. The Order of Athabasca University is given to recipients that have provided exemplary service to Athabasca University or have rendered exemplary service to the community or society while representing Athabasca University. It is my pleasure to introduce our inductee to the Order of Athabasca University. I'd like to invite Diane Davies to stand and then... To stand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Elder Campbell, Mr. President, distinguished guests, members of the Platform Party, graduates, ladies and gentlemen, gives me great pleasure to introduce the newest inductee into the Order of Athabasca University, Ms. Diane Davies. Diane began...
Diane began serving this university in 2010 as a member of our Board of Governors. She has chaired the Finance and Property Committee and has lent her knowledge and experience as a member of the Audit Committee, the Board Human Resources Committee, and the Executive Committee. Over the six years she served our university, Diane provided strong and valuable governance oversight to projects as diverse as the relocation of our Calgary campus and the completion of the Academic and Research Center right here in Athabasca. She was a key member of the President's Task Force on Sustainability, which laid, laid, laid the groundwork for a new vision and purpose for AU. And she served most recently as a member of the Presidential Search Committee, which resulted in Dr. Neil Fasina joining AU last fall. So she obviously did a remarkable job. <laughs> Diane's knowledge and experience have proved invaluable at board meetings, and her contribution have always been both insightful and respectful. She's held with the deepest affection by former colleagues on the board, and I only regret that I didn't have the opportunity to serve with Diane uh, as her term ended before mine began. Those of you familiar with service on public boards will know just what a significant commitment of time and energy this entails, not to mention the sacrifice of family time made by people like Diane. I believe that our faculty, staff, and members of the general public should be aware of the wonderful contributions of our public board members. These are not corporate board members with compensations in the thousands. Our public board members serve as volunteers. People like Diane serve on our board because they care, because they want to make a positive difference, and because they believe in Athabasca University and want it to thrive. Diane's devotion to Athabasca University has been longstanding, and she's been an effective supporter advocate and friend to AU. It is my honor today to present to you the 2017 inductee into the Order of Athabasca University, Ms. Diane Davies. Hello, Elder Campbell, Madam Chair, Mr. President, distinguished guests, members of the Platform Party, graduates, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for this special award. I am very honored and appreciative of this recognition from Athabasca University. Congratulations also to my fellow Order of Athabasca University inductees this year, Dr. Alvin Finkel and Colette Miller. Serving on the Athabasca Board of Governors was a wonderful opportunity and a great learning experience for me. I am very fortunate to have served on the board with so many passionate and knowledgeable people. It was also a great pleasure to work with, with several university presidents and their senior leadership teams, and I thank them for all their patience, support, and their passion for supporting me as a board member and for AU. I, re I recall being told during my initial interview for the board a statistic that the university is very proud of and that has stuck with me and that you heard earlier from Dr. Fasina. 70% of AU grads are first in their family to earn a university degree. Once I was on the board, I also started to better understand what an open university meant. As Canada's open university, AU is dedicated to the removal of barriers that restrict access to and success in university level study and to increasing a quality of educational opportunity for adult learners. But it wasn't until I attended my first AU convocation ceremony that I truly understood and witnessed the power of an open university and the importance of that statistic of 70% of grads being first in their family to earn a university degree. I'm sure you will all feel the same way after today, after hearing all the varied and challenging paths today's graduates took to culminate in receiving their degrees today. The critical role that AU plays in the post-secondary world was also reinforced for me again during an interview with a candidate during the presidential search. 
When this particular candidate, who already had a long and successful career in post-secondary leadership roles, was asked why they were interested in the role at AU, their response was that AU was a national treasure and could not be allowed to fail. They elaborated that AU, through its open and distance learning mandate, fills a critical niche in the post-secondary ecosystem in Canada. That comment from someone with a history with our traditional bricks and mortar universities really emphasized to me the importance of AU and its history of innovation in distance learning. Thank you for this award. Celebrating the graduate success today provides me with such a meaningful and tangible reward for my service to AU. Being inducted to the Order of Athabasca University on top of being able to share in the stories and successes of Convocation Day makes me especially grateful. Thank you to all the board members that I served with and to the past and present presidents, their executive teams and the faculty who supported the board in our governance role. I would especially like to thank Barry Walker and Mark Morasic for their leadership as board chairs during my term, Carol Lund and her team in the Office of the University Secretariat for all their guidance and support, and Estelle Lowe and her finance team for their support of the Finance and Property Committee. I truly miss my active involvement with Athabasca University, but I'll continue to be a champion for AU from a distance. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Diane. Much appreciate those remarks and uh, welcome into the Order of Athabasca University. Will the candidates please rise? Madam Chair, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen of the board, I present to you the petition that these graduates, having fulfilled all of the requirements of the statutes of Athabasca University, may, with your permission, be admitted to the degrees to which they are entitled. On behalf of the Board of Governors of Athabasca University, I declare this petition granted. So graduates, I have the pleasure of administering your last test. Do you promise, when you were admitted as graduates of Athabasca University, to observe faithfully and to maintain loyally the statutes, customs, and privileges of this, your university? And do you promise to accept and exercise, with good judgment, the authority and responsibilities of the graduate and to conduct yourselves in all things loyally and faithfully to the honor of your university? And do you promise to use the knowledge, skills, and wisdom you have acquired to the enhancement of the reputation of the university for the advancement of learning and for the betterment of all? I do so promise. By virtue of the authority vested in me, by the legislature of this province and with the consent of the General Faculties Council of this university, I admit you and those in absentia to the degree to which you are entitled and confer on you all the powers, rights, privileges and responsibilities pertaining to that degree.
Madam Chair and Mr. President, I have the honor to present these graduates for admission to the degree of Master of Counseling. And Dr. Jeff Chang, Dr. Pamela Haranik, and Dr. Margaret Edwards will join you to receive the graduates. Carol Ann Bale. Carol chose Athabasca University because it allowed her to study from home and continue to work with her foster children. Hands down, her favorite professor was Dr. Paul Jerry, who taught her the academics of counseling skills and helped her to internalize the concepts. It was one of her best learning experiences ever. She thanks her family for their support, with special acknowledgement to her sister, her daughter Alana, and her son Christopher. Look, Dad, she did it. Jordan Jeffrey Bayless Morgan. There were times when Jordan felt like quitting this program. At those times, he sought the counsel of family and friends. At one point, he realized that this degree was not simply for himself, but also for everyone who ever invested in him. It was for the benefit of others. And now he looks forward to being a contributing member of society. He gives very special thanks to his parents, Jeffrey and Maureen Morgan, for their support and generosity throughout his studies. Jordan Jeffrey Bayless Morgan. <laughs> Melissa Amberly Boyle Ward. For Melissa, traveling during both Summer Institute and her practicum were some of the most terrifying yet equally empowering experiences of her life. Words can't describe the impact that learning alongside such inspiring and humble colleagues has had on her, both personally and professionally. She acknowledges her family, friends, and fiancé for their unrelenting encouragement and their confidence in her throughout her degree studies. Melissa Amber Lee Boyle Ward. <laughs> Doris Bremner. Dee's maternal Métis culture is rooted here in the Athabasca region. Her grandfather, Billy Ludet, ran a Hudson's Bay trading post at Athabasca Landing in the late 1890s. A triathlon takes place each year in Athabasca to honour him. Dee wears her Métis sash to honour and respect her Indigenous relations, including her grandfather. She acknowledges her husband, Jay, and her son, Tosh, and with a special thank you for their unwavering support and faith in her throughout her studies. Doris D. Bremner. <laughs> Natasha Lee Hammond. Natasha chose Athabasca University Master of Counseling program over other online programs because the courses were longer and had more depth and she wanted to feel competent when she was finished. She thanks those family members who endured and supported her throughout this chapter in her life. She expresses her gratitude to her thesis advisor, Dr. Paul Jerry, for his unwavering positivity, patience, and knowledge. Natasha Lee Hammond. <laughs> Sheila Jane Hudson. Although this degree took Sheila only three and a half years to complete, her journey started in 1992. The bulk of her work toward this degree and the two preceding it occurred between the hours of midnight and 5 a.m. She is so glad to be finished because she really needs some sleep. <laughs> she thanks her husband and her children for their support. Her husband has been being her greatest cheerleader and was her therapist when she was ready to give up. Sheila Jane Hudson. <laughs> Karen Dawn Kirkpatrick. Karen's Summer Institute was an incredible learning experience. Meeting professors and classmates in a real-world setting brought the program to life and made it more meaningful and exciting to her. It allowed her to create strong relationships and put theory into practice. She thanks her family and friends for their support for the duration of her studies, especially her mom, who helped keep both her and her high-maintenance dog well-fed and cared for. Karen Dawn Kirkpatrick. Kamal Rita Kumar. Kamal thanks her parents and other family and friends for supporting her throughout her studies. She gives special thanks to her fiancé for all of his support, patience, and understanding. She feels he virtually completed this degree with her. 
She also acknowledges the wonderful graduate counseling and applied psychology families she gained throughout this program. She met some amazing peers and professors who helped make it a memorable experience. Kamal Rita Kumar. <laughs> Vanessa McConnell. This degree was the most personally challenging thing that Vanessa had ever taken on, and it feels amazing to her to be done. Being surrounded by so many amazing women pushed her to challenge herself and grow. She's grateful to the group and to her instructor, Patricia Costoros. She thanks her partner, Julian, for always believing in her and never letting her give up. Vanessa McConnell. <laughs> Christina Marie McMeekin. Christina started this degree when her son was one year old. Going back to school with such a young child was quite an adjustment. To deal with it, she took advantage of nap times and stayed up late to study after he went to bed. Luckily, he was a good sleeper. She thanks her family for their constant love, support, and encouragement. It helped her to make it through. Her goal has always been to help first responders, so she will continue to work towards that achievement. Christina Marie McMeekin. <laughs> Pamela Dawn Murray. Pamela loves, Pamela loves dancing and is involved with Ukrainian dance. She chose Athabasca University because it allowed her the flexibility to continue working and dancing while pursuing her academic goals. During the first year of her counseling program, she completed a dance tour across Western Canada, so she had to get really good at scheduling her time and completing her readings at all hours. She thanks her family and friends for all their amazing support. Pamela Dawn Murray. Lindsay Ann Pocock. Lindsay thanks her parents for their never-ending support and encouragement throughout her years of educational pursuit. She thanks her partner Jason for being very supportive in so many ways. She acknowledges her peers who have become close friends and who were there to support her through the challenges of this program. And she thanks her practicum supervisor who continues to play a significant role in her professional development. Lindsay Ann Pocock. Hank Shipper. This event is a huge deal for Hank and his family. In fact, he has three siblings who traveled with their spouses from the Netherlands to be present here today. And his wife, children are here also, and that means his support team traveled 43,642 kilometers to witness this moment. He thanks each of them for helping to make it even more special and he thanks all who supported him throughout his graduate journey. Hank Shepper. <laughs> Kelsey Francis Semestchuk. Kelsey remembers her summer institute the most. She loved being in the classroom and getting to meet her classmates. Her final exit course with Dr. Paul Jerry also stands out as a significant time. It helped to crystallize her knowledge, plus she truly enjoyed Paul's feedback. She acknowledges her parents for helping and supporting her in so many ways, including financially, and with encouragement and expressing their belief in her ability to complete this program. Kelsey Francis Semestchuk. <laughs> Ryan A. Schick. Ryan's graduate counseling and applied psychology program opened doors for him, both in terms of increasing his understanding of how psychology can be applied in practice and in terms of psychology as an academic discipline. He thanks his teachers in this program, especially his supervisor, Jeff Chang, who assisted in making his goal of completing a thesis a reality. He also thanks his parents, Marilyn and Roger, for their support through many years of education. Ryan Schick. Sawani <laughs> Sisuraya Mar. Time management was one of the biggest struggles for Sawani, especially considering she worked two to four jobs. However, through her experience with Athabasca University, she learned how to manage her time and spend it more wisely. Now she's one step closer to her goal, becoming a registered psychologist. She thanks her friends who supported her all through grad school, as well as those at AU who made the experience positive and memorable. Sawani Suriyamar. Angela Uncles. 
One of Angela's fondest memories is watching Associate Professor Simon Nutkins demonstrate different techniques during the 2013 Summer Institute. It was there that she learned about solution-focused brief therapy, which she continues to use with clients. Angela is greatly appreciative of the many people who have supported her. It was crucial for her to be surrounded by supportive people, especially in her final year of studies, as she was simultaneously caring for a daughter who was dealing with serious health challenges. Angela Uncles. <laughs> Veronica Lee Wadier. Veronica will remember the peer support she received from members of her cohort. Meeting them at the summer institutes truly enhanced the overall experience, and the compassion and empathy they shared meant more to her than words can adequately express. She also has great appreciation for her family and friends who supported her throughout this challenging journey. This degree has allowed her to open her own private practice in counseling. Veronica Lee Wadier. Kara Catherine Zaharchuk. Kara's favorite memory was her summer session where she met professors and fellow students. It made the whole distance education experience seem real. One of her biggest professional achievements was having her graduate counseling in applied psychology 695 paper published in the Journal of Divorce and Remarriage and then cited in numerous news publications including UK-based The Telegraph. She thanks her family for their patience and support throughout her studies. This would not have been possible without them. Catherine, Kara Catherine Zaharcha. Irene Zinyun Zhao. Irene thanks her family in China and her best friends Ping and Pu Wei for their support. She thanks her classmates Sawani and Diana for their support and companionship. She gives special recognition to Linda and Sean. Without them, she might not have been able to come to Canada to pursue her dream of becoming a psychologist. One reason she loved the online format so much is because she could bring coursework with her when she traveled around China. Irene Zhao. <laughs> Madam Chair and Mr. President, this concludes the presentation of the Master of Counseling graduates. Madam Chair and Mr. President, I have the honor to present these graduates for admission to the degree of Master of Health Studies in Dr. Paul Ger Dr. Tara Murray, Dr. Pamela Heronic, and Dr. Margaret Edwards will join you to receive the graduates. Elise Green Arbic. While on maternity leave with her daughter, it was a challenge for Elise to fit in all of her course readings. However, her daughter's disruptive nights turned out to be a blessing in disguise as 2 a.m. became a very productive time for schoolwork. She thanks her husband for his continuous support throughout her master's program, and she thanks her parents for their keen eyes for detail when assisting with paper editing. Elise Green Arbic. Adriana De Silva. Adriana's experience as a thesis student was the most memorable. It was challenging as much as it was rewarding. She had the opportunity to work with individuals she would not otherwise have had the chance to meet or work with. The experience has allowed her to grow as a person and as a professional. She thanks her thesis supervisor, her committee members, and her external, external examiner for continuing to her success. Her husband, Leonard, deserves many thanks as well. Adriana De Silva. Stacey Lynn Harper. In addition to the demands of working full time, raising one son and having another during your studies, Stacy and her husband also had to deal with his health challenges due to cancer. She's grateful to her parents for their help with childcare so she could complete her school assignments on time. She gives special acknowledgement to her husband for being amazing and wonderful. She would not have been able to accomplish this without him. Stacy Lynn Harper. Lynn Laflamme. Lynn thanks her children, Sarah and Shane, her husband Kirk, and her parents for their patience and support during her studies. She acknowledges with appreciation Dr. Beth Perry for her ability to inspire through virtual connection. Lynn also thanks Dr. Cheryl Crocker for her guidance and support with her first article for publication. It was recently approved to be published in the National Perioperative Nursing Journal. 
Lisa Liflam. Amy Gwen Martinuk. Amy felt honored to have received two academic scholarships during her master's program, one provincial in Manitoba and one national. She thanks the Registered Psychiatric Nurses Foundation for the recognition and financial assistance. She thanks her husband, Scott, for his patience and understanding, and she hopes that her example will inspire her son, Zachary, with a love for learning. She thanks her parents, Barb and Ken Howie, for their support and encouragement. Amy Gwen Martinuk. Eileen Menhaus. One great thing Eileen will remember is meeting devoted and knowledgeable professionals from across the nation. Her peers were inspiring and had so much passion for their field of work. Now having completed this degree, she feels much more confident in herself and in her practice. She thanks and acknowledges her mom for all of her support and admires her for her values and for everything she taught Eileen about being a good person. Eileen Menhaus. Janelle Lynn Pelizari. As a public health professional, the Master of Health Studies program aligned with both Janelle's professional experience and educational pursuits. Also, the flexibility of the distance learning method worked best with her other work and life commitments. Her most memorable experience was being encouraged by a professor to submit her writing for academic publication. She thanks her family, friends, and employer for all the encouragement and support they provided. Janelle Lynn Pelizari. Donnie Sampson, Port Hope Simpson, Labrador. Donnie feels that using her degree as an opportunity to affect patient outcomes has been very worthwhile, especially as the health authority for whom she works has been recognized with, for some of these same initiatives. She thanks her mom for providing continuous encouragement and her husband for stepping in and doing extra tasks so that she could focus on her studies. She thanks her children for understanding and respecting her study needs and her friend Chris for proofreading and providing valuable feedback. Donnie Sampson. Christine Self. A member of the Canadian Armed Forces, Christine was once deployed for four weeks on short notice, so she had little time to prepare coursework ahead of time. While away, she had no internet connection. Her professor was very accommodating, and they worked out a schedule that allowed her to submit the required work. She passed the course with flying colors. She's grateful to her professor and to Athabasca University for their understanding. Christine Self. Lisa Shimka. Lisa enjoyed the convenience of online learning and how applicable all of the courses were to her professional role. She's, she's proud of the fact that she has completed her degree while caring for two young children and working full time. This was possible due to finding a good balance between work, school, and family. She's thankful for her husband who stepped up and cared for their girls while she worked towards her degree. Lisa Shimka. <laughs> Heather Elaine Wong. Heather's favorite Athabasca Uni University course was organizational behavior. She was able to relate the theory within the course to her work environment in a practical way. She learned about herself, her organization, and her colleagues. She thanks her husband, her daughter, and her parents for being incredibly supportive during her studies. Now that she's done, she appreciates having more time to spend with them as, and is experiencing less stress related to deadlines. Heather Elaine Wong. Madam Chair, Mr. President, this concludes the presentation of the Master of Health Studies graduates. <laughs> Madam Chair, Mr. President, I have the honor to present these graduates for admission to the degree of Master of Nursing. And Ms. Debbie Fraser, sorry, <laughs> um, Dr. Kimberly LaMarche, Dr. Pamela Horonic and Dr. Margaret Edwards will join you to receive the graduates. Tannis Michelle Anderson. Tannis will remember the reassuring feeling of knowing that there were many instructors supporting and mentoring her behind the scenes, even if they weren't directly teaching her. 
One great takeaway from this program is how it has increased her knowledge and critical thinking to become a better leader within healthcare and the organization where she works. She thanks her husband, Laust, her, her children, Mikkel and Carolyn, and other friends, family, and co-workers who supported and encouraged her along the way. Tanis Michelle Anderson. <laughs> Jennifer Dawn Anderson. Jennifer is happy to be now practicing as a nurse practitioner after meeting the challenge of completing graduate studies while raising a family of two boys while working full time with her husband working away. She thanks her parents, her husband, and her sons for their support. She thanks her friends, Sharon Allward and Megan McIntosh, who stood by her and completed this accomplishment with her. She thanks her preceptors and professors who helped see her through. Jennifer Dawn Anderson. Sharon Teresa Aylward. Sharon thoroughly enjoyed her nursing 518 residency in Halifax. It was simultaneously the most stressful and the most fun learning experience in her life. She's thankful that she was able to meet some wonderful classmates and professors in person. She thanks her husband James for his unwavering support and tremendous support and tremendous love during her studies. She also thanks her classmates Jennifer Anderson and Megan McIntosh for their support and friendship. Sharon Teresa Aylward. Marie Ann Blair. Marie is certified in gerontological nursing with the Canadian Nurses Association. Working as a clinical nurse educator in the field of gerontology, she's able to combine her Master of Nursing degree. No. <laughs> Uh, master of Nursing degree with a teaching focus with her specialization in gerontological nursing. She thanks her children, David and Michael, for their unwavering support as she produced this lifelong dream. She thanks Dr. Diane Conrad for the support and inspiration she provided. Marie Ann Blair. <laughs> Alina Valeria Batish. One achievement that Alina Valeria is very proud of was writing a 40-page scholarly paper for which she received a mark of 100%. In contrast, one of the best things about having finished her studies is that she will finally have time to read something besides peer-reviewed journals. <laughs> she thanks her family for their support while she pursued this degree, and she thanks her fellow students for sharing their knowledge and experiences from which she learned a lot. Alina Valeria Batish. Colleen Elizabeth Briggs. Colleen has always maintained a focus on community health and she held her, has held various community nursing and leadership roles. Most recently, during her master's program, she transitioned into a director role responsible for specialty teams within home and community care. The transition was challenging and with everything that was going on, but she planned her time well, woke up early, stayed up late when necessary. She acknowledges her husband and her daughter for supporting her through her degree studies. Colleen Elizabeth Briggs. Rhonda Deanne Byrne. Rhonda very much enjoyed the health assessment residency in Calgary, where students could work with some of the best Athabasca University professors in the area. She met some new lifelong friends and found the entire experience to be beneficial on both academic and personal levels. Completing this degree would not have been possible without the help and support of her husband, Jordan, her sister, Tanya, and her close friend, Natalie. Rhonda Deanne Byrne. <laughs> Rustina Chicopella. Rustina received support and encouragement from many people, and for that, she was very grateful. Her husband and her daughter were her cheerleaders and were very understanding towards her study needs. Her course instructors and preceptors were kind, patient, and generous in how they shared their knowledge. Her classmates contributed greatly to her learning experience, and Athabasca University staff members helped to make sure that everything went smoothly. Rostina Chicopella. <laughs> Karen Patricia Curry Delaney. Karen remembers her first course, Advanced Pathophysiology. Although it was an intimidating course to start her degree with, Dr. Bill Deal Jones made an easy transition by presenting cases and applying concepts to clinical practice. She learned the material so much better because of his teaching style. She thanks her husband and her family for their incredible support throughout her program. 
They encouraged her to pursue her goal and to help keep her focused. Karen Patricia Curry Delaney. <laughs> Ashley Ann Deveni. Just as Ashley started this degree, her husband Steve was accepted into law school at the University of Alberta. They bought a fixer-upper in Edmonton, sold their home in Cold Lake, packed, unpacked, registered their son for school, for school, retired from the military, and moved their daughter into her own place, all while Ashley juggled courses. She thanks Steve and other family members for their support and encouragement. Ashley Ann Deveni. Susan Jill Dixon. Susan thanks her family for their patient support during her studies. She acknowledges her husband David and her children, Caleb, Mattia, and Elise, who sacrificed their time with her while she worked throughout her degree. She thanks her parents and her in-laws for caring for the kids so she could attend her clinicals and at other time focus on her studies. She thanks Sherry Jansen for helping her work through the process of finding clinical placements. Susan Jill Dixon. Vanessa Marie Evans. Vanessa completed her studies with children under five years, being pregnant, building a house, and working as much as full time. Yes, there were some challenging times. For example, when her project proposals course wasn't going well, she had the withdrawal form filled out and ready to go. But she didn't submit it. Instead, she persevered and learned a lot from the experience. She thanks her family, especially her husband Blake, who has been a continuous pillar of support. Vanessa Marie Evans. Joya Elizabeth Gomes. Joya's favorite course was Leadership Roles in Health. It allowed her to learn more about herself, the type of leader she is, and what she should aspire to become. One valuable lesson she has learned from her Athabasca University experience is that with hard work and determination, everything always has a way of working out in the end. She thanks her family and friends for their support, especially her husband, for his constant encouragement. Joya Elizabeth Gomes. Erin Elizabeth Gregory. Erin found that having a baby before finishing her degree proved to be quite a challenge. Writing a paper on four hours of broken sleep was never easy, but her commitment was strong, and the support and encouragement from her family was extraordinary. She thanks her husband and her family for supporting her throughout this entire journey. She hopes to eventually pursue a doctoral degree, but for now, will focus on her current role as a clinical nurse educator. Erin Elizabeth Gregory. Trina Halliwell. Trina's favorite experience was the sense of accomplishment she felt after completing her Nursing 611 course and learning how to write for publication. One of her biggest challenges was trying to balance the demands of work, family, and school. She managed these demands by pacing herself, taking breaks, and when all else failed, red wine. <laughs> she thanks her husband Dave and her children for their support and sacrifice during her studies. Trina Halliwell. Claire Louise Hamilton. Claire appreciates having the opportunity to engage in a debate where one of her work colleagues was the opponent. They learned a great deal from one another in the Trends and Issues course and had a wonderful instructor who encouraged learning in an extremely valuable way. She thanks her husband Scott, who was her biggest supporter. Without his support, she would not have been able to work full time, complete a degree, and enjoy life all at once. Claire Louise Hamilton. Sharon Nicole Hamlin. This journey was not easy for Sharon, and there were many days when she questions its, questioned its value. The fact that she did complete this degree gives her a tremendous sense of pride. She is so glad she stuck with it. She thanks her husband Rob for his unending patience and encouragement, and her children Latham and Atley for serving as a reminder to keep it real. She thanks her dear friend Lindy for all her meaningful and much appreciated words of encouragement. Sharon Nicole Hamlin. Angela House. It wasn't until Angela's last course, Nursing 530, in which she fully realized the impact that Athabasca University professors can have on a person's education. The course was nerve-wracking, but the guidance she received from Kimberly LaMarche will never be forgotten. Angela thanks her family for being her main support throughout her studies. They've seen her at her worst, and they still provided guidance and support. They have been her reason to pursue this degree. Angela House.
Erica May Hewley. Today marks almost 20 years to the day when Erica received her nursing diploma. In 2012, she received her Bachelor of Nursing degree, and today she stands here as a Master of Nursing graduate. So she started her nursing career in 1997, and in 2017, she's starting her nurse practitioner journey. She could not have done this without the support of her husband, Jason, her mom, and many other friends, family, colleagues, fellow students, and professors. Erica May Hewley. Jasmeet Johal. First and foremost, Jasmeet thanks her dad and her mom for giving her this opportunity and for supporting and encouraging everything she does. She also thanks her husband for being supportive, patient, and understanding while she tried to balance home life, a full-time job, her education, and being a new mom. She thanks her daughter for being her inspiration through her last year of studies. Jasmeet now looks forward to further pursuing her passion for teaching. Jasmeet Johal. Emir Keeley Dick. Emir thanks Athabasca University for the flexibility of online learning, as without this option, she would not now be a nurse practitioner. She was inspired to become a nurse practitioner when, after working with several of them following her undergrad studies. She thanks her husband Andrew for all his days single parenting while she studied for this master's degree. She thanks her first preceptor, Cheryl Tigelar, who became her mentor throughout the program. Emir Keeley Dick. Michelle Lack. This degree gave Michelle the opportunity to complete many public speaking events on the topic of compassion fatigue. Research for this was done with her master's program, was done within her master's program. She completed this degree thanks to the great support she received from family, friends, and work colleagues. In particular, she thanks her husband Rowan for his amazing support and her son Theodore, daughter Octavia, and extended family for their continual love that motivated her to keep going. Michelle Lack. Valerie Ann Levesque. Valerie is grateful for the knowledge and mentorship she received from Dr. Sherry Melrose. It has fostered in her a desire to pursue lifelong professional growth. She thanks her family and friends for their endless support and words of encouragement. She owes many thanks to her fabulous co-workers and teammates who encouraged her to start her Master of Nursing program and who provided suggestions and feedback throughout her studies. Valerie Ann Levesque. Michelle Little. This is a very proud achievement for Michelle as she was able to complete her degree while working full time and later having two children in the midst of her studies. Her family contributed significantly to her success, supporting her financially, providing childcare, and encouraging her throughout her journey. She thanks her mom and dad and her husband for all their support and encouragement. Michelle Little. Corrine Ann Eva Margulies. Corrine thanks her professors for their time, commitment, and dedication to her learning. They provided insightful feedback and wisdom that contributed to her ultimate success in the program. She thanks her husband and son for their understanding and encouragement that also contributed to her success. And she thanks her fellow students for sharing their experiences and wisdom. She learned a lot from them all. Corrine Ann Eva Margulies. Natalie Ann Mather. Natalie is exceedingly grateful to her husband Chris and her parents Murray and Ann for their incredible support throughout this journey. One example is how they, they helped after she and Chris had their baby Grayson last August. Chris took seven weeks of paternity leave to look after Grayson so Natalie could complete her clinical hours. Then Natalie's mom used vacation time to look after Grayson a few days a week. Words cannot express her gratitude for their support. Nat Natalie Ann Mather. Carol Ann Middleton. Carol Ann experienced a number of family circumstances that impacted her studies, but she managed to refocus and get the job done. She prides herself on being resilient regardless of the circumstances. She appreciated the support she received from her Athabasca University instructors, and she learned a lot from many of her courses. The proposal she wrote for one of her courses is currently being used to prepare for a pilot project on her nursing unit. Carol Ann Middleton. Stacy Jolene Middleton. St 
Stacy was able to complete this degree while working full time and completing her specialization in orthopedic nursing. She was also active on the executive board of the Canadian Orthopedic Nurses Association Edmonton chapter, where it hosted and she presented at the national conference in 2016. She thanks her parents, Cliff and Diane Middleton, for their support throughout her studies with Athabasca University. Stacy Jolene Middleton. <laughs> Natalie Rose Murphy. Natalie's favorite course was Nursing 625, Personalized Learning. She found Dr. Sherry Melrose to be an inspiring instructor who ensured that each student had the opportunity for personalized learning. Her genuine concern and support of feedback made Natalie feel valued. Natalie thanks her husband Ryan for his love and support and her dad for all of his encouragement. She acknowledges professors for sharing their knowledge and their passion. Natalie Rose Murphy. <laughs> Carrie Leanne Norman Laver. More than 20 years ago, before entering the field of nursing, Carrie earned a degree in women's studies. One of her final courses for her AU Master of Nursing program was the elective Global Perspectives on Violence Against Women. Although a tough subject, it reinvigorated her passion for feminism and her desire to support women through her work. She gives special thanks to her husband Mason for his support and unwavering belief, belief in her abilities. Carrie Leanne Norman Labor. <laughs> Benjamin Richard Northcott. The courses that Benjamin took on teaching and nursing truly helped him to hone his skills in it as an educator and to become more purposeful in the decisions he makes about what to teach, when to teach it, and how to teach it. He thanks his wife for the sacrifices she made to support him and for enduring his endless hours of homework. He thanks Lethbridge College for their financial support and his co-workers there for taking on extra work, allowing him to focus on his studies. Benjamin Richard Northcott. Ola Ojalare. One of the things that Ola appreciated about Athabasca University was the warm reception she received from her professors and how flexible they were. They were all quick to respond to her emails whenever she was puzzled and needed guidance. She thanks each of them for the support they provided. She also thanks her husband, her daughters, her parents, and her sisters for all of their support, encouragement, and prayers. Ola Ojalare. Elizabeth Jane Pearson. Elizabeth loved everything about her Athabasca University experience. However, she did find the courses to be both challenging and stressful. It was kind of a love-hate relationship. Her studies were sometimes affected by challenging circumstances at her workplace, so she tried to relate her studies to her job and was able to complete some projects at work. She thanks her husband Mike and her daughter Jennifer for their love, support, and encouragement. Elizabeth Jane Pearson. Jessica Peddle. The support that Jessica received from the professors and staff at Athabasca University was nothing so short of amazing. Her professors were very understanding of the fact that students had other commitments and lives outside of school. They were all very kind and flexible. She also acknowledges her family, friends, and fiance for putting up with her during her studies. Without their love and support, completing this program would have been impossible. Jessica Peddle. Carolyn Margaret Poulin. Carolyn's initial plan was to avoid the philosophical foundations of nursing course, but after a wonderful discussion with Dr. Joy Fraser, she decided to pursue the Master of Nursing stream where the philosophical foundations of nursing course ended up being her favorite. She acknowledges her family for their love and support without which the successful completion of this degree would not have been possible. Carolyn Margaret Poulin. Gail Ray. Although Gail works in an institution that offers graduate degrees, she chose Athabasca University mainly for the flexibility of the online program. Once in the program, she discovered the added bonus of taking courses with other professionals from all across Canada. Their experiences and perspectives were extremely interesting. She acknowledges her husband and three daughters for how they handled the demands of her studies while pursuing this degree. Gail Ray. Katharina Margaret Reed. 
Katharina's favorite pro professor was Sherry Melrose, who she found to be the most encouraging and person who exemplified the attributes of an excellent instructor. Katharina also acknowledges Joyce DeAndrea for exemplifying perseverance during difficult times and providing critical feedback to her growth. She thanks all of her professors for their mentoring, encouraging, and critiquing of her work, and she thanks her husband Roger for all his support. Katharina Margaret Reed. Samantha Roberts. Samantha thanks her husband Adam, her parents, her grandfather, and her colleagues at James Patton in Gander, Newfoundland, and Labrador for their unwavering support throughout her studies. She acknowledges Dr. Jack Jensen for his kindness and guidance, which was essential to her academic success. Also, her experience would not have been the same without her friends and colleagues, Becky and Stacy. They spent many hours collaborating and learning together. Samantha Roberts. Jennifer Helen Sansaloni. One late night, Jennifer was unable to submit an assignment due to technical difficulties. Her husband drove her to work where she successfully submitted the assignment in her pajamas with no makeup on. To her embarrassment, she ran into some colleagues who were suitably amused. Even so, she thanks her boss and coworkers for their support throughout her studies. She thanks her family, especially her husband and her daughter for being her support system. Jennifer Helen Sansaloni. Lisa Roxanne Sebastian. Lisa's mother believed in her and even while her health was deteriorating, she made sure that Lisa began her first course in this program. It was difficult for Lisa to focus on her studies during this period, but she received great support from her family and from her professors. After her mother's passing, the encouragement she received from her dad, her brother and her sister gave her the confidence to continue. And after getting married, her husband was also there to help encourage her through the rest of her studies. Lisa Roxanne Sebastian. Priya Sebastian. Priya took a chance on a dream, and as she stands here today, she can say that dreams certainly do come true. She had a great experience with Athabasca University and found the technology and the support mechanisms to be fantastic. She thanks her instructors who brought so much value to the online classrooms every week and the faculty who challenged her thinking in many ways. She thanks her family, friends, coworkers, and mentors for their encouragement, love, and support. Priya Sebastian. Kayla Elizabeth Smith. Kayla got married in 2015. She loves to plan, so she juggled to complete her studies, work full time, and plan a wedding without a wedding planner. She took it in stride and worked extra hard that year. She thanks her husband Gus for helping her through the challenges of her studies and celebrating her every accomplishment. She thanks her best friend Stacy, who completed this program with her. She's grateful that they get to celebrate the achievement together. Kayla Elizabeth Smith. Stacy Vanessa Jade Snow. Being from Newfoundland, Stacy found the group work and time differences particularly challenging because they often resulted in midnight group meetings, but she survived. She thanks her husband Steve for his many hours of support and encouragement and for taking on extra household tasks. She thanks her friend Kayla for encouraging her to start this journey and being her biggest supporter. She thanks her mom for teaching her the importance of education. Stacy Vanessa Jade Snow. Brittany Lorraine Tradewell. The most challenging part of Brittany's studies was becoming a mother while completing her final eight practicum components. It wasn't easy juggling a four month old, being away from the house during the day, and having homework in the evenings, but they made it through. Her husband was her biggest supporter and a voice of reason when she was ready to quit. She appreciates how he was always there to listen and for her to lean on. Brittany Lorraine Tradewell. Jessica Sang. Jessica heard how some of her peers had to withdraw from a course because they were not able to find preceptors. So before every semester, she would print 50 resumes and go door to door to meet physicians and offer them free help in exchange for ch sharing their knowledge and experience. It worked. She is so appreciative for the guidance and patience of her preceptors, and she's excited to be a family nurse practitioner. Her own practice will be opening shortly. Jessica Sang. Andrea Robin Walker. 
Andrea is proud of having a diverse nursing career. She started out in surgery and emergency nursing, followed by more than 10 years in the intensive care unit. She has recently enjoyed being a mentor and teacher during her role as a facility nursing instructor, and she is now excited to begin her career as a nurse practitioner. She thanks her husband Brad and their boys Owen, Cameron, and Liam for all of their support, love, and encouragement throughout her studies. Andrea Robin Walker. <laughs> Melissa Ward. The flexibility of this program allowed Melissa to continue to work in multiple settings, have two babies, and move across the country and back while her husband completed medical school and residency. Finding time each day for schoolwork was challenging, but she somehow find a way, even when it meant writing papers during vacations. She thanks her family for all of their love and support, with special recognition to her husband Matthew and her mom Claudia. Melissa Ward. Kimberly Dawn Weinkoff. Without the support and compassion of the Athabasca University staff, professors, and course colleagues, Kimberly wouldn't be standing here today. During her Master's of Nursing studies, she lost three loved ones to cancer and would have withdrawn from the program if not for the support she received. One person she lost was a friend and mentor who two years ago lost her battle before she could walk across this stage to receive the master's degree she had worked so hard for. Today, Kimberly walks the stage in her honor. Kimberly Dawn Weinkoff. Kimberly Rose Westcott. Although Kimberly ended up putting some very late nights in, the flexibility of this program allowed her to study from home while continuing to work and raise her young family. She loved her final few nurse practitioner courses because she was able to apply everything she had studied and learned in the previous courses. She thanks her husband Jared and their children, Caitlin, Sean, and Izzy, for putting up with her wacky schedule and long hours of study. Kimberly Rose Westcott. Stacy Lee Whitman. Even though Stacy never met any of her Athabasca University classmates in person, she still felt a connection with them. She appreciated them for the feedback they provided during online discussions and for their encouragement and support. She thanks her husband for his consistent and unwavering support throughout her studies and for the ways he encouraged her. She also thanks her parents for the many ways they too provided support and encouragement. Stacy Lee Whitman. Elizabeth Patricia Wilkie. Elizabeth feels fortunate not to have had any huge obstacles, obstacles during her studies other than juggling work, family, and school. She, gets, she enjoyed getting to know fellow students and instructors. She knows that some fellow students faced major obstacles, and she's very proud of them for making it through the program. Elizabeth also enjoyed connecting with people from all over Canada, and she appreciated the Athabasca University Library where the staff were fantastic. Elizabeth Patricia Wilkie. Stacy Lee Wood. Stacy always dreamed of being a teacher, but nursing was more important to her. Now with this degree, she is able to teach nursing and combine two of her passions. She chose Athabasca University so she could do her coursework anytime while working almost full time. She's happy to have completed both her undergraduate and graduate degrees without any student loans or student related debt. She thanks her family for their constant support and encouragement. Stacy Lee Wood. Madam Chair and Mr. President, this concludes the presentation of the Master of Nursing graduates. Okay. Well, I think that our Asani group is going to be rejoining us on the stage here. And Asani is a really remarkable group of musicians who uh, I had the pleasure of first meeting uh, in uh, Washington, D.C. We had a, a session some of you may have been aware of in 2006, I think it was, uh, that it was, was called Alberta at the Smithsonian, where all of our artists and cultural leaders and community leaders 
uh, gathered in Washington, D.C. to showcase what Alberta is and what we have to offer the world. And at that event, uh, the, um, the universities had an, an evening function and Asani was there to perform for us. And ever since then, I've been an ardent admirer. So I was really delighted to learn that Asani is performing for us here at Athabasca University and has been doing so for many years. So thank you to Asani. We're going to share a blessing song in the, in the Cree language of our, our families and our ancestors. The, song, the words of this song are, my friend, I sing this song for you. I ask the Creator to give you a good life and love to you. Madam Chair and Mr. President, I have the honor to present these graduates for admission to the degree of Bachelor of Nursing. And Ms. Dawn Mercer Riselli and Dr. Margaret Edwards will join you to receive the graduates. <clears throat> Trina Nadine Adams. 
Trina's clinical experiences were the most memorable. Jacqueline Mann and Jessica Kaiser challenged her beyond her comfort zone, preparing her for her final preceptorship. She acknowledges instructors Lisa Adams and Yvonne Moore and her Indigenous education professor, Erica Niganwejan, for their insight and kind words. She thanks her mom for always believing in her, her dad who would have been proud, and her hubby Billy, <laughs> Bill for providing constant encouragement. Trina Nadine Adams. Uzoamaka Linda Amuzat. This is a great achievement for Uzoamaka, especially considering the challenges she faced when pregnant with her second son. At that time, she was working full time doing 12 hour shifts, and she had her AU coursework to complete as well. She thanks her husband, Olawali, their boys, Olamidi, and Olafemi for their valued support. Her next goal is to eventually complete a master's degree with in intention of becoming a nurse practitioner. Uzo Amaka, Linda Amuzet. <laughs> Danelle Diane Bono. <laughs> Danelle admits that she despises needles, but she has no problem administering them to others. One Athabasca University experience she will remember is attending her, her clinical sessions in Alberta, although she admits leaving her family for a month at a time was tough. Her first grandson was born just a week before she had to leave home for Calgary, and she was so relieved that he was not a late arriver. She's grateful to her family for their support throughout her nursing program. Danelle Diane Bono. <laughs> Trina Lynn Buzan. Completing this degree has been the fulfillment of a lifelong dream for Trina, and she thanks her, her family for their exceptional love and support throughout her studies. One of her passions in the nursing profession has always been obstetrics, more specifically labor and delivery. Two days after her final clinical experience, she received an employment opportunity doing just that. And for the past 10 months, she has been moving forward in this rewarding line of work. Trina Lynn Buzan. <laughs> Kathleen Jean Cardinal. Kathleen's favorite course was the Métis because it started her on a, on a path to earn her degree and learn about her heritage. She believes in lifelong learning and hopes that she has demonstrated to her children the importance of perseverance and never giving up on their dreams. Near the end of her degree studies, she experienced a role reversal as her children became the catalysts for her to complete her assignments and study for exams. Kathleen Jean Cardinal. <clears throat> Nora Upenyu Chirumgoma. Nora developed greater confidence and competence thanks to the knowledge and mentoring she received from her instructors. She also learned how to collaborate successfully with other healthcare professionals. Her favorite course was her mental health clinical. She was in with a great group, they had an awesome instructor, and she only wishes that it had gone on for 30 days. She thanks her husband and her girls for their support and encouragement during her studies. Nora Upenyu Chirungoma. Lauren Chikalski. Oh, excuse me. Nicole Dawn Crampton. Nicole acknowledges Tatiana Pinconic for being a hugely influential instructor who recognized her strengths, supported her learning, and encouraged her to go further with her career and educational goals. She thanks her parents and her husband who helped her financially and emotionally. She recognizes all the strong and caring nurses that she has had the opportunity to work with. She couldn't have done this without their love, support, and encouragement. Nicole Dawn Crampton. <laughs> Christabel Ibarvia. Christabel found that although the instructors and tutors were always there, the students had to take responsibility for their own learning. She feels proud to have pushed herself to read more, practice more, and learn more. She thanks her family for their love and support, especially her father, who instilled in her the value of education, her mother, also a registered nurse, who shared her wisdom and encouragement, and her partner Chris for being her biggest cheerleader. Christabel Ibarbia. <laughs> Janet Ako Faduba. 
This achievement is a dream come true for Janet, and she is so very grateful to Athabasca University for making it possible. When she first came to Canada, she had many dreams, but when she started having children, she was certain that furthering her education would be one dream that was out of reach. Then she found that Athabasca University offered every course she wanted and she could study online. She feels blessed to have been a student here. Janet Ako Faduba. Marla Fader. Balancing family, work, and school was challenging for Marla, so she just took things slowly and told herself that time was going to go by regardless. So she is better off working towards something than rather than spending her life regretting never trying. She thanks Professor Maureen McQueen for being the most supportive and positive and for building up her confidence. She thanks her husband Cameron and her children Ryan and Nicole for their support and encouragement. Marla Fader. Wilson Joy Pasqua. There were many times when Wilson Joy questioned this career path due to struggles in her personal life or with her health. She had to dig deeper and turn to prayer to realize that yes, nursing is for her. She thanks her family and friends for always being there to support and motivate her to continue. She has fond memories of her clinical experiences where she put into practice what she had learned through reading and how she, she and her fellow students supported each other. Wilson Joy Pasqua. Gina Finiteri. People are capable of amazing things. Gina discovered the ability to work under a pressure when she completed a multi-page paper in just 12 hours, after she had forgotten about it. Also, she found that writing papers with a very demanding two-year-old was challenging, so she wrote many papers in the middle of the night. She acknowledges her boyfriend, Mark, for being extremely supportive. He's the reason she was able to stay focused and complete this degree. Gina Finiteri. Tracy Lynn Fisher Zazer. Tracy chose Athabasca University because of the ability to start a course at the beginning of the month and not have to wait until the next term. It's taken her some time to complete this degree, largely because she put her family and her children's educational needs first. Now that the goal is achieved, the feeling is surreal. She thanks her husband and her children for all their support on this journey. She's very happy now to be able to put that BN behind her name. Tracy Lynn Fisher Zazer. Stephanie Louise Green. Perhaps there are a few other graduates who can understand this, but one huge learning curve for Stephanie was learning how to write APA style papers. Her first paper was not perfect, but the comments she received and the APA manual then became her Bible for, a for writing papers, and she learned. She thanks her family for listening to her talk about her APA style papers every weekend, when she was working on them, and for being very supportive throughout her studies. Stephanie Louise Green. Feng Han. With English being Feng's secondary language, she is very proud of completing this degree. It has truly enhanced her confidence in her work and in her life. She thanks her husband, who has been a great supporter throughout her studies. She also thanks South Lake Health Center in Ontario, where she works full-time as a registered practical nurse. The professional practice coordinator, Brenda Mundy, provided great support for arranging her exam and her clinical placement. Feng Han. Carrie Hart. One memory that will always stick with Carrie is the feeling she experienced the day she submitted her final assignment. The realization that she had completed this goal was the best feeling in the world. She thanks her husband David and their children Madison, Taylor, and Dorian for their support and the sacrifices they made throughout this journey. She also thanks her close friends and colleagues, especially Patricia Loeb, who started this journey with her. Carrie Hart. Mihoko Hisatomi. Since enrolling in Athabasca University, Mihoko has lived in Ath Alberta, British Columbia, Saskatchewan, and Singapore. Although she loves British Columbia, she feels an attachment to Alberta, and since graduating, she likes to call Alberta her second home. In January 2016, she made the Athabasca University Honours List, proof that she can deliver results no matter how long it takes. She thanks her husband Pierre for supporting her throughout her studies. Mihoko Hisatomi.
Tabitha Lorraine Hudgen. Tabitha will remember her nursing 401 course and how challenging yet rewarding the clinical placement was. She left that placement with so much more knowledge and confidence. She has many people to thank for their support and encouragement during her studies, including her fiance James, her mom Debbie, the staff at Athabasca University, and her co-workers. She's looking forward to beginning her career as a registered nurse in hematology and bone marrow transplant. Tabitha Lorraine Hudgen. Shendra Kayan Hyatt. One of the great experiences for Shendra has been working through her courses with her pal, Jilly. They both went to licensed practical nurse school together and ended up working in the women's health together. They also started the LPN registered degree nurse program together, where it has been a blast studying together and supporting each other. She thanks everybody who has provided support on this journey, especially her parents and other family members. Shendra Kayan Hyatt. Natalie Rochelle Johnson. Natalie feels blessed for having the ability and perseverance to complete this degree and for having an incredibly supportive family who are even willing to drive to Athabasca to help her celebrate. She thanks her husband Andrew for proofreading her papers, making her lunches, driving her to clinical, and supporting her every step of the way. She also gives special thanks to Caitlin Toms, not only for being a great study buddy, but also for becoming a lifelong friend. Natalie Rochelle Johnson. <laughs> Jaya Jose. At the time, Jaya was doing her third practicum and she fractured her ankle. She was concerned about being able to complete the practicum, but her instructor, Jessica, advocated for her at Athabasca University and at Rocky View Hospital. As a result, she was able to complete, continue her studies with an air cast on. She successfully finished the practicum and will never forget Jessica's help. She's excited to be moving forward with her career and looks forward to working as a registered nurse. Jaya Jose. <laughs> Nazma Khan. Despite many hurdles that threatened to get in the way of this degree, Nazma is proud to say that she made it. From undergoing major life-threatening or major life-saving surgery to the adoption of her three beautiful children, she didn't let anything get in the way of her goal. From the beginning, her husband has been her biggest supporter. Her sister provided much appreciated encouragement. Her parents would call often and remind her that she was almost done. This degree is for them. Nazma Khan. <laughs> Benyam Kitla. Benyam met many wonderful professors and tutors on this journey, but the professor who had the most profound impact on him was Joanne DeForest. She's a sweetheart. Benyam immigrated to Canada from Ethiopia about 10 years ago with a big dream and little experience. He's excited to have now fulfilled a childhood dream. He thanks his family and friends for their support, especially his sister, without whom this achievement would not have been possible. Benyam Kitla. <laughs> Chelsea Kokoska. In 2011, Chelsea moved from Cape Breton, Nova Scotia to Calgary. Moving to a new city and not knowing a single person was a life-altering experience for her. While she began her studies with Athabasca University, it gave her the opportunity to start meeting people, some of whom will remain lifelong friends. She thanks her husband Michael for being her number one supporter and she thanks many family and friends for their guidance, love and encouragement. Chelsea Kokoska. Erin Kathleen Kraft. All of Erin's clinical experiences were positive and a lot of fun. She loved her medical surgical clinical the most because of her instructor, Trudy, who was one of the most positive instructors she met. She also established new friendships with fellow students Christine and Amanda and thanks them for their support while she stayed in Edmonton. She thanks her mom for continuous support and for editing papers and her husband for keeping the kids out of her hair. Erin Kathleen Kraft. Megan LaFrance. Megan thoroughly enjoyed her final focus preceptorship in the neonatal intensive care unit. It was there that she solidified her love of caring for the vulnerable neonatal pop population. She now works in a level three neonatal intensive care unit in Edmonton and truly enjoys her job. 
She thanks her boyfriend Brendan, her mom Cindy, her dad Randy, her brother Jesse, and her nanny and grandma for their ongoing and unwavering support as she pursued this dream. Megan LaFrance. Amrita Laura. All of Amrita's clinical instructors were amazing and very supportive of the difficulties their students faced when transitioning from a licensed practical nurse to a registered nurse state of mind. She thanks her parents for the sacrifices they made so that she could earn her degree. She thanks her brother for his constant words of encouragement. She is currently practicing in the hospital where she was born and is excited about the new opportunities that await her. Amrita, Laura. Audra Ann Leopold. After 20 years of being out of school, Audra returned to get her Bachelor of Nursing degree. In the beginning, she had to learn how to study, and that was a struggle. She also worked full time and cared for ailing family members for four of her eight years of study. She achieved her goal by taking one class at a time and never stopping until she was finished. She thanks her coworkers, her manager, and her family for their support, especially her daughter and her husband, Audra Ann Leopold. Wanda Leung. Wanda's advice to others is don't quit, even when it feels like the end will never come and it's the hardest work you've ever done because the rewards and sense of achievement at the end is incredible. She gives special thanks to her best friend, Ruth Caro, for spending countless hours editing her assignments. She thanks her family, especially her husband, Michael, for their, their encouragement, their help with chores, and their patience with her study schedule. Wanda Leung. Patricia Mary Loeb. Patricia will remember the statistics tutor sessions at the Calgary campus. One of her favorite memories was working on homework and assignments with the statistics study group. This made the tutor sessions valuable. She thanks her husband Dan and her two boys for their patience and support throughout her studies. She thanks her dear friend and study partner, Carrie Hart, for helping keep her focused and on track. They completed their degrees side by side. Patricia Mary Loeb. Shannon Wynn Malo. Shannon's journey with Athabasca University has been supported by her amazing family, including her children, Ashley and Andrew, and her spouse, Terry. They managed on their own while she spent many long hours locked away in the computer room working on her courses. She also thanks her dad, Jerry, and her mom, who passed away, for their unwavering support and belief in her. Her coworkers provided much encouragement as well. Shannon Wynn Malo. Sriya Erchilige. Among several great instructors, Sriya will never forget Joanne DeForest for providing wonderful support and guidance as well as positive feedback during each of the two nursing courses. There are many people to whom she owes her love and appreciation, including family, instructors, preceptors, her employer, and her friends. Special thanks go to her husband, Lysantha, and her son, Harry, for the sacrifices they made and the challenges they handled to assist her. Saria Erchilige. <laughs> Michelle Bernadette Matthews Dedrick. For Michelle, breaking her arm two weeks before her final course finished, with two papers still due, sure put a lot of pressure in the final stretch. Thank goodness her husband Jim was a good scribe and could type. She thanks Jim and her children, as well as their extended family, for always supporting and encouraging her on this journey. She also remember the great encouragement and support received from her professors, tutors, and fellow students. Michelle Bernadette Matthews Dedrick. <laughs> Tanya Maureen Meadows. Tanya thanks her husband and children. They were her biggest supporters while she completed this degree. Her husband kept the children quiet and busy when she needed to focus on her studies. He also covered all the household duties when she was away for her three clinicals. Those clinicals were her favorite courses in this program. The instructors were amazing and supportive and she enjoyed meeting other students in person. Tanya Maureen Meadows. <laughs> Cecile Loretta May. 
Cecile's best experience was during her nursing 441 placement at the Grey Nuns Emergency Department, where she had the opportunity to get experience with the emergency team. She also appreciated the support she received from her colleagues and her managers during each of her clinicals. She thanks her husband, Greg, and her daughter, Aaliyah, for inspiring and motivating her through her studies. Cecile Loretta May. Joanna Mendoza. Keeping herself motivated for more than three years through the process of distance learning was definitely a big challenge for Maria jo Joanna, not to mention being both a full-time mom and employee, getting through clinicals, and dealing with the financial challenges. But she did it. She acknowledges her loved ones who stood by her throughout this journey, journey including friends and family who watched her develop into the graduate nurse that she is today. Joanna Mendoza. Tasneem Moldina. The ability to study at her own pace is what attracted Tasneem to Athabasca University. The program required a great deal of hard work to succeed and she found it especially challenging to leave her husband for a number of months to go and complete her clinical hours. But she loves being a hospice nurse and is looking forward to developing her career in this field. She thanks her mom, dad, husband and son for their support during her studies. Tasneem Moldina. Kirsty Lynn Moreau. Athabasca University allowed Kirsty to obtain her degree at her own pace, picking up extra courses when life saw it feasible, and taking a break when things became too overwhelming. Traveling across the country alone and navigating a new city for her practicum placement was terrifying, but her professors and fellow classmates were supportive and helped make it a positive experience. She thanks her parents and her boyfriend for all their support. Words can't describe how grateful she is. Christy Lynn Moreau. <laughs> Bolvinder Kaur Nagra. Bolvinder worked full time while she completed this degree and had a family to tend to, so she is very appreciative of the support she received from her husband and children. She also acknowledges the faculty at Ath Athabasca University and thanks them for their support and guidance. She says one of the best things about completing this degree is knowing that she can challenge herself to high limits. She's looking forward to working as a registered nurse. Belvinder Kaur Nagra. <laughs> Manjeet Nagra. For Manjeet, having the opportunity to work in another province and live in another city during her clinical course was a great experience. She also met some wonderful people while there. She thanks her family for their great support and encouragement throughout her studies. She acknowledges her friends as well and the staff at Athabasca University. She now looks forward to working as a registered nurse and furthering her studies in the pursuit of a master's degree. Manjeet Nagra. <laughs> Lori Gail Newman. Lori chose Athabasca University for the ability to work on her courses around family and work obligations. She will remember how hard it was to write papers again after having been away from school for a number of years. One challenge that motivated her was making sure she graduated before her kids graduated from university. She thanks her husband Jeff and the boys Kyle and Connor for helping her stay focused on completing this degree. Lori Gail Newman. Mary Jane Nicholas. Mary Jane will remember how professional and knowledgeable her clinical instructor was. Her instructor's great teaching skills helped to enhance the critical thinking abilities of the students as well as their nursing performance. She expresses her deepest gratitude to her parents for their unending support and patience during her studies. She also thanks her friends and fellow employees at the University of Alberta Hospital for their support and encouragement. Mary Jane Nicholas. Christine Ann O'Hara. This experience has taught Christine that she can do anything she puts her mind to. Her tutor for Nursing 400 and her acute care clinical, Tatiana Penconic, was a huge motivator for her. Because of Tatiana, Christine thinks she will likely go on and get her Master of Nursing degree through Athabasca University. As well, she expresses great appreciation for her family as she could not have completed this degree as quickly as she did without them. Christine Ann O'Hara. Chantelle Elizabeth Pencrat. 
For Chantelle, one of the best things about this achievement is finally accomplish accomplishing something she has wanted to do since the age of 11. Her favorite course was Nursing 441, Consolidated Professional Practice. It has made this whole hectic and crazy adventure worth it. She thanks her family, her parents, her husband, and her current unit at Foothills Hospital for their continued support while she worked towards this goal. Chantelle Elizabeth Pankrat. <clears throat> Kate Pouquet Pantel. Kate has completed a nursing degree twice, once in the Philippines in 20, uh, 2008 and now here in Canada. She acknowledges each of her tutors for the guidance, support and encouragement that they provided throughout her studies with Athabasca University. She dedicates this achievement to her mom and dad for all the sacrifice and the hard work they put in. Now she can finally be a registered nurse. She looks forward to becoming more involved in multidisciplinary patient care. Kate Pouquet Pantel. <laughs> Lauren Danielle Peterson. Lauren found that no two courses at Athabasca University were the same, and each of her tutors influenced and supported her in different ways. She admits that throughout her degree studies, she did her best brainstorming while eating Smarties and her best paper writing while drinking wine. Now we know her secret to success. She thanks her family, especially her parents, who provided endless love and support throughout her studies. Lauren Danielle Peterson. Christine Marie Philbrick. Christine has worked for more than 20 years in the post-secondary education sector supporting students. It was a real eye-opening and life-changing experience to be in the student role herself. She experienced tremendous empowerment taking the, leadership, the nursing leadership and management course. She never, never thought of herself as a leader and this enabled her to look at her practice through a new lens. She thanks her daughters for their unwavering support and for being her inspiration. Christine Marie Philbrick. Kelsey Rose Quayle. Kelsey will never forget the many, many essays she had to write. But after years of perseverance, she has achieved her goal and is looking forward to new opportunities and challenges as they may be presented. She thanks her fiancé, her family, and her friends who have been helpful and supportive throughout her studies. She also thanks her instructors from Nursing 401 and 441 who were supportive and whom she learned quite a lot. Kelsey Rose Quayle. <laughs> Malena Raka. Throughout this journey, Milena has the, has the privilege of meeting some wonderful people from all over Canada. The hardest thing she had to do, however, was leave her children and her husband, Ned, to travel from Ontario to Alberta to complete the clinical component of her program. It was their support that helped her push and continue onward. She gives special thanks to Ned for all that he did, and she thanks her mom and dad who stood, also stood by her along the way. Milena Raka. Rose Roussel. Rose's favorite course was her psychiatry clinical rotation at the South Health Campus Hospital in Calgary. She loved the course because it taught her about life and gave her a clear perspective on her own life and character. She thanks her mother and father for their ongoing support and encouragement. They are the ones who taught her about perseverance and success. Rose Roussel. Monica Santar. Monica feels like Athabasca, Athabasca University chose her. She moved to Calgary in hopes of doing her bridging there at another institution, but they did not rec recognize her previous diploma. So there she was in a new city, so what to do? She turned to Athabasca U. She appreciated the flexibility of the program and the great clinical professors. She acknowledges her family and friends for their support, especially her mom for always pushing her to work harder to get ahead. Monica Santar. Maria Schneider. For Maria, both personally and professionally, the completion of this degree has produced a subtle yet powerful feeling of accomplishment and contentment like she has never before experienced. She now knows that there are no limits and that she can accomplish anything. She thanks her husband Gary for his daily support and encouragement and her parents, Ruben and Anita Espinoza, for their prayers and encouragement. Maria Schneider.
Shannon Leah Skinner. Shannon thanks her employer, Regina Capel Health Region, for uh, allowing her opportunities to advance in her career. She thanks her children, Kylie and Dylan, for teaching her to embrace and enjoy technology. She thanks her mother, Lorraine, who instilled in her determination and her work ethic. She thanks her husband, Bob, whom she met thanks to her career when she was working as a camp nurse in New York. They've been married 16 years today. <laughs> Shannon Lee Skinner. Uliana Telpanu. After working in the nursing profession for 23 years, Uliana has found that it can present new challenges every day, so you never truly finish training. A great thing about this degree is that it can open doors to non-clinical opportunities such as teaching, case management, informatics, and policy making, which can be appealing after committing so many years to bedside nursing. She thanks her family for encouraging and supporting her while she completed this degree. Uliana Telpanu. Janice Leanne Thompson. One unique thing about Janice's Athabasca University experience was living in Norway and scheduling trips back home to visit Calgary to see family and write exams. She thanks her husband, her mom, and her sister for believing in her ability to go back to school and achieve this goal. When she was one course away from completing this degree, it helped her to land a job as a unit manager and transition from a staff nurse role to frontline leadership. Janice Leanne Thompson. <laughs> Felicia Tong. Felicia chose Athabasca University after hearing about the program from her preceptor during a previous practicum experience. The most challenging part was working full-time while studying part-time as it required a lot of dedication to complete each course. One thing she will remember is meeting others who were on the same learning path as she was. She, helped, thanks, she thanks her family for their support and her Athabasca University instructors who helped guide her to where she is today. Felicia Tong. <laughs> Shannon Allison Trout. One challenge that Shannon faced was having to redo a clinical because of a high-risk pregnancy. She took a year off from her studies and focused on her pregnancy. One year later, she completed the program. She thanks the many family members who supported her along the way, including her husband, her mother, her sister, and others who provided various means of support. And she acknowledges her preceptors who are all wonderful. Shannon Allison Trout. <laughs> Amanda Lynn Vanderhoek. The tutor that had the greatest impact on Amanda was Trudy, her nursing 401 instructor. Trudy's words of encouragement and constructive feedback enabled Amanda to grow as a nurse. Trudy challenged the group to think outside the box, helping them to develop critical thinking skills. Amanda also acknowledges her family, whom she thanks for their ongoing support and encouragement. Her husband was her greatest supporter. Without him, this achievement would not have been possible. Amanda Lynn Vanderhoek. <laughs> Jesse Barkihees. Jesse found the community health promotion course to be the most challenging, but thanks to feedback and encouragement she received from Marlis Valiant, she was able to complete the course. She thanks all of the professors who helped support her along the way. She acknowledges her husband for his encouragement and her two daughters for their moral support. She now looks forward to working and applying the knowledge she has gained from this program. Jesse Varkees. Caitlin Sarah Veenstra. Caitlin's favorite course was her consolidated practice where she was placed in labor and delivery in Thompson, Manitoba, her dream placement. To follow that up, she has accepted a full-time permanent position in emergency at the Thompson General Hospital. She thanks her parents for always supporting her with necessary resources and much welcomed encouragement. She also thanks her friend, Natalie Johnson, a great study partner and a kindred spirit. Caitlin Sarah Veenstra. Zara Villa. Zara chose Athabasca University because of the flexibility it offered, particularly for mature students that juggle many roles. While completing this degree, she was able to continue working as a licensed practical nurse. She thanks her family for being such a strong support network, especially her mother, Rowena, and Roblin, 
her best friend in Toronto. Their words of encouragement helped her stay focused and focused on her goal, right to the end. Zara Villa. <laughs> Salma Wally. This degree is a big achievement for Selma and her family. It fulfills one of her childhood dreams, and she is so happy that she took that first step five years ago. She acknowledges Tatiana, her instructor for her medical surgical clinical, for making it a memorable experience. She thanks her husband and two children for all of their support during her studies. She also thanks her coworker and good friend Gloria for the motivation and encouragement. Selma Wally. Chun Hong Wang. Athabasca University gave Chun Hong the opportunity to achieve her dream of completing a degree while continuing to work and support her parents and her son. Thanks to the program, she now feels much more confident at work. She will remember her mental health clinical instructor who encouraged her to stand up for herself and not let anybody put her down. She thanks her parents, her son Brian, and her friend Arthur for their support while she completed this program. Chun Hong Wang. Gail Verna Witt. Gail thanks her family and friends for their support in helping her to achieve this lifelong goal, especially her husband Lindy, who understood her deepest moments and cheered her on every step of the way. She's also grateful to her tutors who are amazing, in particular Frederick Ulmer and Gwen Rempel. Today is a very special day for Gail with her daughter, her sister-in-law, her mom, and her husband all here to help celebrate her convocation. Gail Verna Witt. Samantha Jane Yadlos. Samantha appreciated the support and flexibility that Athabasca University allowed her. Events that interfered with her studies included breaking her leg, starting two new jobs, and raising two young children. AU made it easy to adjust schedules to deal with everything. While working on this degree, she went from being a charge nurse to a care coordinator and now to a unit manager. Her studies here helped her in making those transitions. She thanks her husband and kids for supporting her throughout the process of her degree studies. Samantha Jane Yatlos. <laughs> Madam Chair and Mr. President, this concludes the presentation of the Bachelor of Nursing graduates. Thank you. The gold and silver Governor General's medals, established in 1873, are one of the most prestigious awards that can be received by a student in a Canadian educational institution for exceptional academic achievement. Only students with a grade point average of 3.5 or higher and who have completed the required number of Athabasca University credits as determined by their registered program are considered. On behalf of His Excellency, the Right Honourable David Johnston, Governor General of Canada, I am pleased to present the Silver Academic Medal to this year's recipient, Christine Philbrick, a graduate of the Bachelor of Nursing program from St. Catharines, Ontario. On behalf of His Excellency, the Right Honourable David Johnson, Governor General of Canada, I am pleased to present the Gold Academic Medal to this year's recipient, Adriana Da Silva.
Adriana hails from Calgary, Alberta, and is a graduate of the Masters of Health Studies program. She has agreed to give the address to the graduates. Please join me in welcoming Adriana to the podium. Take a chance, words we may often hear, but don't always pursue, sometimes due to others, but more often due to ourselves. My story begins when my family decided to take a chance and move to Canada shortly after the Bosnian War. Many people told us it was a risk and to be wary of the unknown, yet how many times have we each heard that in our own lives when we tell others that we are going to take a chance? My parents soon realized just how much hard work was behind that decision. But I am grateful for the chance they took because it gave me opportunities that they never had. The outcomes of many chances I've taken weren't based on luck, but on hard work and determination. After coming to Canada, I strived to learn English, to fit in with the other kids, and to be a good student so that one day I could go to university. Unfortunately, despite my best efforts, things didn't go as planned, and I found myself frustrated with my lackluster grades at the end of high school. I applied to a few local universities and at the time did not receive acceptance. I felt deflated and started building up my own walls and set self-doubt, thinking to myself, my parents don't have university degrees, how am I any different? Or if I couldn't do well in high school, then how can I do well in university? My mom, though, was highly encouraging and always reiterated to me the importance of a good education and what it would do for me in my life and for those around me. So I shook off my self-doubts and went back to the drawing board. Fortunately, I found a university college in the city with a transfer program to a full degree at the University of Calgary. I was about to build up some doubt again, but I decided to take my mom's advice and take the chance, and my determination paid off. I succeeded, and after two years, I transferred into the UFC's Biological Sciences program. Life was great, I just got into university, made a bunch of new friends, and met the wonderful man who would later, later become my husband. But I started to lose sight of something very important, hard work. At the end of my first semester at the UFC, I found myself at the dean's office on academic probation. Clearly, I was in quite a, quite a dire situation, and when I looked in the mirror, there was only one person to blame, my husband. <laughs> Just kidding, honey, I love you. <laughs> I was determined to get things back on track. Doing so was a lesson of learning balance between work family and fun, and this skill would serve me very well in the future. As many as you have, may have already guessed, I worked my way off the Dean's naughty list and onto a convocation stage just like this to receive my bachelor's degree. It was now time for a new challenge and a new chance to take, and that was finding work in my field. I sent out 99 applications with no luck. It was there that once again I was building up my own walls and my own barriers because I was comparing myself to others, even my husband. He was very successful at an early age, the youngest ever senior financial analyst at Alberta Health Services, age 23, and a full CPA scholarship. So I started thinking, how can I compare? And I've also seen many of my friends graduate and not find work in their field. I was determined though to take a chance once more and I sent in that 100th application. A few days later, taking that chance paid off, and I received an interview for what would become my first position as a research assistant at the UC in gastroenterology. Doors were starting to open in my career, but I soon realized that doors were going to start closing if I didn't take my education to a higher level. I was looking through different graduate programs and in talking with my husband, he mentioned a friend he knew who was taking a Master's of Health Studies at Athabasca University. 
and it might be something I'd enjoy. I decided to meet her for coffee, and it was just exciting hearing about all the possibilities. She was very passionate about her program, and I will later find out that many students who attend Athabasca University are. I looked at the entrance requirements, and I began to worry. I was one timbit short of a dozen, my GPA just under the minimum requirement required for admission. I was hovering on the fence at this point in time whether I should apply or not. I decided to take one graduate, undergraduate sorry, research course to boost my GPA and to decide whether uh, online learning was for me. With a little bit of hard work, the course came naturally and I found myself with an A and a GPA required for admission. Once again, everything was going great, a wonderful marriage, family and friends, and a bright future ahead. But then life happened. My mom was diagnosed with stage four cancer. I felt somehow guilty. I put a lot of effort into my own betterment, so I decided to see if I could help others around me, most importantly, my mom at the time. That vocation to help others is what led me to work in cancer research and solidified my decision to apply to Athabasca University. I found a research associate position with the UC in oncology. I was severely underqualified with just a bachelor's degree, but I applied either way. I also applied at the same time to Athabasca University, for which you could also say I was underqualified for, but I took a chance and prevailed. During my first semester at AU, I got the AU Open Magazine in the mail. On the front cover was a man standing in front of a hockey net holding a hockey stick. Beside his image, it said, Dr. Jeff Valance, explores the benefits of a wonder drug called physical activity. I read the article and was instantly drawn to what Jeff had to say. I was contemplating emailing Jeff to see if he would take me on as one of his students. For a moment, I had doubts in my head. What if he already has enough students? What if he's not interested? I was determined in at least trying, however, so I put my doubts aside and I emailed Jeff. Over the last two years, Jeff and I have worked on some amazing research on physical activity, sedentary behavior, and patient outcomes among lung cancer survivors. I could have not asked for a better supervisor than Jeff. There were moments where I had self-doubt and he would reassure me and tell me not to be too hard on myself. He also coached me and helped me build up my self-confidence to get rid of that pesky self-doubt once and for all. Last, but certainly not least, Jeff set me up for long-term success by connecting me with a colleague of his at the UFC and encouraging me to start a PhD under her supervision. The old me would have said things about the PhD like it's too much or it's unplanned, and if they look at my undergrad grades, they might laugh at me. However, the new self-confident me has taken another chance, and I'm starting a PhD program this September in a research area that I have found to be my passion and my drive towards success. As I bring my story to close, my friends, I wanted to reiterate that some things in life you have control over and some things you don't. My mom passed away in June of 2014, but I was able to tell her that I got both the research associate position in cancer research and that I was accepted into this program. Her last words to me were just how proud she was of me. It's been a lot of hard work, sweat and tears to get to this point, but I hope that I've made her proud and that I've stayed true to the whole reason which I started, which was to make the lives better of those around me. Throughout this program and my career, people have given me a chance to impact their lives and make a change. I hope that as you go on throughout your lives, that you too will give others a chance. And at the end of the day, do not set up barricades, remove any self-doubt, and take a chance. Thank you.
Adriana, we too are very proud of you. Well done and congratulations on all of the hard work and all of the accomplishments and we wish you the very best in the success in your PhD program. We're confident that you'll achieve that degree and look forward to hearing about your success going forward. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the graduating class of 2017 from Athabasca University. Thank you all for attending our convocation ceremony. There, uh, your graduates and guests will be invited to join us for lunch uh, across the way uh, in a luncheon that's sponsored by the Athabasca University Students Union and the Athabasca University Graduate Students Association. The ceremony is now recessed. Members of the audience are requested to rise and remain at their seats until the platform party, members of the board, members of the faculty and the graduates have completed their exit. <laughs>